So have you guys seen those things going around on Facebook, like the little memes, and it has nine pictures of something, and you have to pick two of them for the rest of your life? My choices, if they are available, are always coffee and chocolate. And that's perfect for today. But before I tell you why that's perfect for today, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Zudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for another round of 365 days of soap. And today on the soap table are two of my favorite things, coffee and chocolate. We are making the chocolate espresso. The chocolate espresso has been in my line since the very beginning. And it's an exfoliating bar, has the coffee in it, and that's amazing. Also has a cool caffeine kick because of the coffee, which is also good. And then, you know, the chocolate notes and everything, it's just absolutely delightful. Uh, cocoa butter's thrown in there too for extra moisturizing. It's a lovely bar. It is one that I have a difficult time keeping in stock, and I get why, because when I make it, I keep half the batch for myself. I don't really do that, but I want to. You know, I, I, and I would if nobody else bought it, but uh, everybody buys it. So anyway, uh, this bar, it's a very simple process with this bar. I, sometimes there's a lot to be said about the really, really simple designs because they can look absolutely stunning. And this one is definitely no exception. So let's go watch the process of the making of an exfoliating coffee chocolate bar. And maybe you can get some pointers now. with all these short videos lately so yeah the chocolate espresso this oil blend is actually absolutely delightful we have a it's a palm free blend we have cocoa butter in place of the palm and coconut oil because I love coconut oil and we also have in this guy apricot and argan and canola oil so no olive in this either and we are using, we did the espresso shot before and we used coffee as a lie. And we are not doing that for this one. This one actually has a caffeine extract in it to up the coffee awesomeness. And so, yeah, we don't really need the coffee necessarily. And also, I did want to keep a portion of this batter white. So, in order to do that, we really can't use coffee in place of the water for the lye solution. And Okay, so George May is actually making this right now, right? And um, it's interesting watching her process versus mine. She, you know, found emulsification, did the thing, and she always adds the kaolin, which was dispersed in water for this guy, before she measures out any of her containers, which is fascinating because I actually add it at the very end. So it's very interesting watching other soapers, you know, do their thing. And that's cool. It kind of shows that everybody has a different soaping style and it's all, you know, fine, really. Now, the portion that she is measuring out right now is going to be for the top portion of this bar, which is going to stay completely white. Now, because of that, we want to remove it right away, obviously, like you separate out anything. But also, we will not be putting any of the scent blend in it. So the scent blend has, you know, the caffeine in it and the espresso, and then you have the, the cocoa butter in the actual oil blend itself, which is going to lend to the smell of the chocolate, but there's definitely a nice chocolate, you know, scent going on in the um, blend too. And that can all discolor because usually when you're getting anything that have uh, has like sugary notes, food type notes, you're going to have a lot of vanilla in the the scent really and you don't want that 
in a white because it will discolor dark brown very, very quickly. Now, George May is putting in the uh, coffee grounds into the soap itself, and then we'll be using the cappuccino mica, which has been dispersed in a portion of the oils. This particular batch is super fat at about 8%, so uh, it's a really big, beautiful, like, creamy lather with this, uh, with this bar, which is important when you're messing with a coffee soap or any exfoliant to that matter because exfoliants can tend to inhibit lather and we definitely don't want that. So we want to put a lot of extra bubbly lather in or oils in here to ensure that the lather is still really, really good while you're getting your exfoliation. So that's, you know, super important in this process. And this particular recipe has the, the super fat is just the coconut oil to really up the, the, the bubbling because coconut oil is great for really big bubbles, which is, you know, awesome, but it can be a little bit drying. So that's where, you know, the argan and the cocoa butter really come into play because they're very moisturizing oils to put into a soap because we want it again, big bubble, but we do not want it to dry your skin because that would be lame and stupid. Now, looks like she decided that she wanted to put some more mica into this and you can go either way. I really don't think it's necessary because again, this particular scent blend discolors to a dark brown as it hits air. And so it's not really necessary to make sure that your uh, soap batter is the dark brown that you want it to be because it will you know, discolor to dark brown. But I think she's doing this because one time we didn't put enough cappuccino in and it ended up being a very light brown and looked nothing like coffee. So she's just hedging her bets with this, which is also, you know, very smart. Okay, now on to the pour. This guy is done in a silicone mold and, you know, like, you never actually see the rest of them, right? We're just doing the one, but as this one is being done, we are also making, you know, multiple other batches at the same time because this makes like 11 bars or 10 bars and that's not, no. So this is a uh, kind of great for the silicone, you know, the silicone molds in the respect that you don't have to worry about edge pieces needing to be cut off because it's pouring into a silicone mold, but you see how it's bowing there? I hate that bow and I've yet to find a silicone mold that will just stand up on its own without the need for, you know, essentially putting it into a wooden, you know, mold container thing. And this one from Brambleberry is the one is the best one that I've seen so far that will actually have it's reasonably heavy walled it will stand up on its own okay but you see there with the you know in the upper middle portion of the, the length of the mold how it's well it's on the bottom too it's bowing out on both sides I usually put like pieces of wood around the molds to stabilize it and I guess I could get Mr. Soap and Clay to, you know, make me a mold, you know, holder thing, but whatever. It's, it's fine, but if you're going to be using a lot of silicone molds, do keep in mind that for the most part, they are pretty flimsy and are not going to be able to hold up, you know, the weight of the soap that's inside of them. So, you know, maybe make yourself a, a mold holder thing. Now, for the top portion of this guy, Again, we do not scent it with anything. We want to keep it nice and bright white because that was the design. And, you know, that's the foam on top of a latte or, you know, something awesome. And that's why we, we do it that way. And so the thing is, when you're not scenting portions of the, of the batter, there have been a lot of soap makers in my uh, classes, my master classes at the shop that have you've been concerned about that. Well, are we going to, you know, what the first thing you put on, you know, next to your nose is the top of the soap. So it's not going to smell like anything. I have not found that to be an issue at all. The scent underneath definitely, you know, comes through and the entire bar appears to be scented, even if you're not scenting, you know, portions of it, but do keep that in mind in your calculations, because if you are removing, you know, 12 ounces or so from your you know, three pound batch or whatever, and not scenting it, then you need less scent for the portion that you are scenting 
just if only to ensure that you don't get any issues with like separation or rising or the, you know the batch accelerating too quickly. Now she's being very very gentle with the uh, laying of the soap here and it's a very beautiful process. She's so precise. It looks amazing. She's doing yeah. It's like do you see how she's lovingly putting it on? That's amazing. Like she's no. I just dump and go. <laughs> but it's, she's, oh yes, that's just so satisfying to watch. That's just, that is a labor of love right there. You can tell that she super cares about this bar and everything is going to be absolutely perfect when it's all said and done. And, you know, speaking of all said and done, this is all said and done. So it will go into the oven to seep up. I do like to get heat to my soaps as quickly as possible to really force a second heat phase and get the saponification done and out of the way as quickly as possible. And that allows me to cut my soaps the next day so it can set up and that's, you know, good. And oh look, she's even, she's getting out the towel and wiping off the molds. Like, now this is what happens when you have a soap that's too simple. You feel like you need to put more work into it than you necessarily, you know, should. So she's being very, precise with it and good job George May you're doing great you have the extra time to do the things as opposed to you know other soaps that take four times as long to make and so you don't want to clean the edges afterwards <laughs> Okay, now it is cut time and this has set up overnight and I love sea popping soaps for this reason right here look how shiny everything is you can see, you know, the white top, which is beautiful and shiny, but then the brown bottom, you can totally see how lovely that is as well. I've had questions a lot. People have been using like activated charcoal and whatnot in their soap making. And they will ask me, how do you get your blacks so black? And the answer is always seep up because when you seep up your soaps, you force them through gel and you're going to, you know, change your muted gray or whatever to a really dark beautiful black and that's true of all colors if you you know get some heat to them it really forces them to come into their own you know faster and yeah there is nothing wrong with this bar this is a really great exfoliant bar obviously because you have the coffee in them and i've had a lot of customers ask me if this is okay for you know septic and you know all those all those things and i have had zero problem with that in you know my particular home i i weirdly live you know right outside a huge city but we are on septic like i live in gig harbor and tacoma is just right across the bridge and everywhere in gig harbor we're on septic which is strange and it's never been a problem with my septic system at all and so you know i I use this all the time. I love the, the coffee scrub bars so much. The caffeine kick to them in them is really good too because it has a nice plumping and you know tightening thing. So this is definitely the, the bar that I use when I'm gonna wear you know shorts or a short skirt or whatever just to make sure that everything's nice and where it's supposed to be if I'm gonna be showing off the gams. And yeah, no, it's beautiful. That is uh, day 95, the chocolate espresso. It is the sister bar to the espresso shot, both smell like coffee and they are amazing but this one has an extra you know chocolate kick to it as well as the uh, caffeine extract boost and that's a winner all around in my book and yeah isn't it beautiful it's so simple and so lovely and there it is the chocolate espresso as i said very simple design but there's just so much awesome that's packed into this that you know the design it can be very simple and also when you're working with coffee and a chocolate scent which is going to have lots and lots of vanilla in it you're going to expect that your batter is going to discolor to a brown really quickly so you know you got to work with that brown color and as a result this is what i came up with now the white part on the top it doesn't get scented with anything so there's no espresso there's no coffee or there's no chocolate there's no anything to keep it nice and crisp and white and give the nice layers of a uh, delineation i love a good scrubby bar they are one of my favorite soaps ever to use i have at least three in my shower at this exact moment and the chocolate espresso is definitely one of them so yeah, if you are interested in purchasing the chocolate espresso, you can totally do it. I have it in stock at this exact moment, 
on the website at silverplay.com. If you're interested in following me on social media, yeah, you can do the things. I'm there, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you are interested in more soapy antics, subscribe to the channel because we're doing this every day and that's cool. So yeah, to that, I am done for today and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.